Las zonas tradicionales cocaleras son zonas de montaña, de ceja de selva, pero acá en la selva baja ahora encontramos plantaciones de hoja de coca donde se han adaptado a este terreno. ¿no? En estos momentos estamos llegando a una de las pozas que se ha podido divisar desde lo alto. Es una poza de regular tamaño. We're heading now closer to the river, to the center, the spiritual center of the town, I should say, the church, and uh, we're going to meet the elder council. Desde el año 1995 se ha venido migrando todos los israelitas de los 24 departamentos. Entonces ahora estas comunidades producen, se está creando un estado sólido que se va formando solo. After a brief time talking to the elder council, our sit-down interview was cut short. The elders rushed outside for Altomonte's Friday evening prayers. Clearly, this was an important ritual for the Altaucusi, their weekly offering to God. These men literally stopped in their tracks when the music and singing at the church began. It's it's 6 p.m. now, and the brothers are headed to the alabanza, to the prayers. And then a ritual began in Alto Monte that few outsiders have seen before. The Israelites offer an animal sacrifice to God, or as they call it, a holocaust just as Ezekiel had taught them to do. The women are on one side, the men on another, and this is the sacrifice that is being offered on this Friday by the Israelites. This is about as close as I think I'll ever get to living in biblical times. <laughs> Gradually, we began to learn more about the Israelites and their beliefs. They preach the apocalypse, awaiting a new cosmic cycle where the Amazon will become a paradise overflowing with milk and honey. They believe they have a divine right to settle and work the land. They also believe their beards are antenna that reach God's frequency. After arriving here, the brothers began expanding their settlements while also taking charge of local agricultural commerce. Today, the Atacusi are the chief suppliers of consumer produce for the Peruvian Amazon. Then, something in Peru shifted. It's not exactly clear how, but coca, one of the most profitable crops on Earth, began arriving in the Amazon basin, possibly from growers from the Colombian side venturing into new territory. Altomonte sits exactly here, and small farmers belonging to the church live in remote corners of the rainforest surrounding it. And that is why authorities, particularly from neighboring Brazil, say some of the group's members have become involved in the drug trade here. On this visit, we didn't see coca in the vicinity of Altomonte, so we headed to the Brazilian side of the triple border to learn more. We just crossed into Tabatinga, Brazil. This is the community directly on the Brazilian side of the triple border region. Uh, no one stopped us, no one asked for our passports, uh, no one searched our vehicle. So you can kind of get a sense of how porous this border really is and the challenges that the anti-drug efforts of these three governments are facing as they face increasing coca production in this triple frontier region. Today, the triple border has become a no-man's land where few policemen enter. Between Tabatinga, Brazil, Leticia, Colombia, and a small village called Santa Rosa in Peru, barely any authorities are present. For starters, the Peruvian Amazon province of Mariscal Ramon Castilla sits next to Brazil, the world's second biggest consumer of cocaine after the United States. According to UN estimates, in the last five years, coca plantations in the province have grown by 400%. 
We met Mauro Sposito, a senior investigator with the Brazilian Federal Police. He's kept an eye on the Autocusi in the region, and he helped us map out the situation on a large scale. Nós temos uh, a comprovação de que os seguidores dessa seita, que nós cremos serem fanáticos, estão plantando coca. Eu tenho as fotos exato dos cultivos de coca em terras deles e tenho fotos deles presos transportando cocaína. E não todos cultivam coca, alguns cultivam coca. Uma nova zona cocaleira foi implantada no Peru, nesta região do Baixo Amazonas. Nós estimamos, exato, que um hectare de folha de coca chega a produzir 30 quilos de pasta base de cocaína. Que esses cultivos possam ultrapassar fronteiras, nós queremos a destruição de laboratórios que produzem drogas naquela região. Nós, Polícia Federal, Exato, fornecemos inteligência à Polícia Nacional do Peru para que a Polícia Nacional do Peru promova a destruição de laboratórios naquela região. Every year, the Brazilian Federal Police and Durandro, the Peruvian anti-drug agency, run a joint operation called Operación Trapecio. Durandro allowed a vice news cameraman to ride along with them on an interdiction operation, right in the region where the Atacusi presence is strongest. We spoke to Miguel Ángel Peric, who is chief of operations in the division that combats drugs in the Amazon. Las zonas tradicionales cocaleras son zonas de montaña, de ceja de selva, pero acá en la selva baja, con un clima muy diferente, eh, ahora encontramos plantaciones pues, de, de hoja de coca, de cultivos de, de coca, donde se han adaptado a este terreno. ¿no? La geografía propia de la selva es tan amplia y en la práctica nosotros hemos sido, hemos destruido laboratorios clandestinos en ese sentido y posteriormente cuando regresamos eh, eh, hay, hay nuevos, nuevos este, laboratorios que pueden ir surgiendo. ¿no? También hemos tenido enfrentamientos directos con estas personas que buscan pues que proteger su inversión. ¿no? En esta parte de la selva utilizan un método que le llaman o le denominan el método del solvente o el método colombiano. Un tanque de agua de 3.000 litros y ahí van procesando con la hoja de coca. La hoja de coca se utiliza la hoja de coca verde, no la hoja de coca seca a través de un proceso que lo mezclan con químicos, buscan la reacción de, para la extracción del alcaloide de una manera más rápida. En estos momentos estamos llegando a una de las pozas que se ha podido divisar desde lo alto. Es una poza de regular tamaño, tiene cilindros. So this is what it's all about. This is a coca plantation of this illicit crop here in the lower Amazon basin of Peru, an area where 10 years ago, uh, this crop and this cultivation uh, was completely unknown. 